This is the first episode of The Lionhead Diary. My name's Peter Molyneux. Let me just explain a little bit about what you'll be seeing. We at the Game Developers Conference recently unveiled one of the three big features that are going to feature in Fable 2. And that big feature is the emotions that you will be feeling as you play the game. And so, you feeling loved is really important to us. And that's what a lot of this episode is about. Love is that warm, fuzzy feeling you get when you realize that somebody cares about you so much they'll forgive you being a complete ass. Love is very important to me, uh, sort of in my life. I kind of very much uh, like to consider myself a romantic. Love means many things to me. It's f family love, uh, erotic love. What people often do is, conf is confuse lust with love. Love for pizza, love for coffee. God, I love coffee. Because we deal with love every day in our, in our lives, and we kind of, it's something we recognise and are very you know, sort of intimate with, if it's faked on screen, it can be very jarring. It can be very you know, obvious that it's wrong. And so it's very difficult to get that right. As we get more processing power, the AI will indeed get more uh, sophisticated and you'll be able to track a lot more variables, you'll be able to do a lot more with it. And so all of the ambitions that we had for Fable 1, which we couldn't quite put in, we are bringing back into Fable 2. Most RPGs are about going off on grand adventures, uh, and you know, Fable's exactly the same respect in that respect. There's all the very, very big sort of supernatural, uh, 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 exciting, action-orientated uh, storyline. Uh, but what we try to do with Fable games is we try to, to make sure that the player realises that all the things he does out in the world while he's out adventuring have a really, really big impact on the rest of the world and how the rest of the world sees them. Uh, so for us, uh, the love and the, the respect and the fear, all these factors here are altered each time you go out on one of these little missions. And for us that makes it a much, much deeper experience than simply going out, bashing a dragon on the head and going, right, I've got 30-something rather points. We'd like to bring the emotion back into it all times, and love's going to be a very important part of that. In Fable 1, we had the, you do the sexy expressions and stuff, and they like you more. You give them gifts, they like you a bit more. And we kind of try to build on that. So there's that aspect of it in Fable 2, but there's a lot more to it as well to try and get someone to fall in love with you. And hopefully we'll get the balance right, such that if you find one person, the way they talk to you, it slowly builds, and you can tell you're, kind of, you're getting there slowly, and you know, I think they'll sort of maybe want you to take them out as well, rather than just giving them gifts they might want to go for a nice walk with you. That sort of thing is a, is a thing that we're experimenting with to try and get the process of them falling in love with you to be more, um, I guess, more real. What I said at GDC was um, I was talking about emotions again, and I was focusing on love, and I was definitely focusing on being loved. And I focused on the dog because I wanted to show the quality that we were putting into the dog in the game. Gamers, casual gamers, everybody who sees that dog, they will say, that's a dog. I understand him. I understand when he's excited. I understand when he's sad. I understand when he's, uh, when he's happy. I understand when he's hurt. He looks like a real dog. You know, what we could have done is given you this dog and made him controllable by you. Uh, allow you to send him to places, get him to wait, um, have him so that you could press a button, he could attack. That would have been the easy thing to do, but no, we've been brave about this. We give you no control over the dog. I don't press a button when I go out with my dog for a walk. I just go out with the dog, and the dog does his thing. And he knows that if I don't like something, he damn well doesn't do it. That's how you control the dog in the game. If you look at the history of other visual media, uh, cinema for example, the addition of love uh, and sort of emotive content has been a really big deal. If you look at Charlie Chaplin, he introduced emotion into a film called The Kid and suddenly cinema was elevated to a new form of art. Uh, I'm not quite saying we're there yet, but I'd very much like to think that we're kind of in the vanguard of, of groups who are interested in this side of games rather than you know, sheer thumb candy. We give you no control over the dog. Just think about that a second. No control over the dog. You haven't got a dog button. And a lot of people would say, that's just mad, man. You know, it, 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 how can I be engaged with something? And what we've said is, you control the dog by playing the game. You control the dog by worrying about you as a hero. I think the very fact you don't control him makes him feel real. Makes him feel like something that has a mind and that has an agenda, and that agenda, first and foremost in that agenda, is his love for you. 
his willingness to sacrifice himself for you, his need to please uh, you in everything that he does. Thank you.